What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and you're watching our college football channel and it's time for my week two top 25 ranking as we're heading into week two of the 2022 college football season. I think a big problem with a lot of these rankings early in the year, especially the first few weeks, is that people just get hung up on their preseason expectations for these teams. You think that a team is going to be good and they don't look good week one, but you, you, you don't want to drop them too much because you still think that team is good, even though what you have seen has told you that that team is not very good. And uh, we see that with all the, the top 25s. As of this recording, the AP Coaches Bowl, they have not come out yet, so I haven't even looked at those. By the time you see this video, they probably will be out. Uh, but what I'm trying to do is just look at what I have seen, what I know for sure about these teams, what I saw in week one, and so my rankings are going to look different than probably any other rankings that you see. Um, but I think it's the only fair way to do it because that's all we have seen. We've only seen week one. We haven't seen these teams play for several games and there's still a lot of unknowns. I'm going to do a, a resume ranking at the end. At the end of the video, I'm going to just kind of show you how the team should be ranked based off of a resume. But what I'm doing is based off of what I have seen. So how good a team looked on the field, what I saw with my own eyes and, and what I do know about these teams because we do know some stuff from the preseason and it's impossible to completely wipe away all of that preseason information. So let's get started here at the bottom. And we've got Cincinnati, Ole Miss, Florida State, Penn State, and Purdue. Uh, Purdue comes in at number 25. They move into the rankings. And they're not the only team to move into the rankings despite losing a game. Because what I saw was that Purdue was arguably better than Penn State. I know Penn State won that game. But Purdue... They were better than I thought they were going to be. That passing game, of course, was really good. They were able to spread that ball around, uh, find some receivers. The Iowa transfer looks like he's going to be a, a great player for them. They were able to run the football a little bit, which is, again, more than I thought they were going to be able to do against a Penn State team that should should be really good against a run. And even the defense for Purdue, that, that front was pretty solid for them. So what I saw was a top 25 team. They just lost the game. Penn State moves into the rankings at number 24. And again, this game was down to the wire. These teams should be very close in the rankings because you saw that on the field. They were very close to each other. Again, I, Purdue, to me, if you look, watch the whole game, I thought Purdue looked like a, a better team. But you have to give Penn State credit because they made the plays that they had to make. And at the end of the day, it's about winning the game. Penn State was able to do that. Sean Clifford was really up and down, but like I said, he made the plays when he had to really impress me. This team is very young, but you can see the talent on the roster, and this Penn State team has potential. We'll see if it can all come together, uh, but yeah, I was I was really impressed with the way they were able to, to make those big plays when they needed to and, and come back and win that game at the end. Uh, that was a nice performance. Florida State number 23, of course, we know about the crazy game we saw on Sunday night. Uh, was really impressed with their defense, especially their pass rush, uh, their run defense. Very, very good. Uh, you saw Jordan Travis make a lot of throws that you just didn't see last year. He has improved tremendously. But LSU, at this point, you know, they're coming off a 6-6 six and six year. We don't even know if they're any good. Uh, let's just be honest. I mean, they look like a pretty talented roster, but LSU could be terrible this year. And so I can't move Florida State up too much until I know uh, for sure you know, where LSU is, and I want to see Florida State play another quality opponent. But yeah, definitely a top 25 team based off of what I have seen, and potentially uh, maybe even like a top 15 team. Uh, they look like they've got a lot of things figured out. Ole Miss at number 22, a little bit of a slow start against an FBS team, but not a Power 5 team. Uh, so they did drop a little bit for me. Uh, never, Not a game where you were ever worried about them losing or anything. So kind of compare that to Kentucky. Kentucky fell out of my rankings because Kentucky was in a very close game at halftime. Ole Miss, they, they were in control of this game at halftime, and that's the difference. That's why you see Ole Miss uh, in, still in the rankings, Kentucky dropping out of the rankings. Cincinnati at number 21. Uh, played Arkansas really tough. The second half really got that passing game going. You look at the, this team at the line of scrimmage, they were physical. They were matching Arkansas. Looks like a quality team. I don't think they're going to drop off much from last year. Uh, not going to penalize them for going on the road and playing Arkansas, so they stay at number 21 for me. 16 through 20, Tennessee. I know it was against a MAC team, but they were very, very impressive. Both sides of the ball 
I think, was it the first play they had a pick six? I mean, uh, I think it was Ball State tried a trick play or something. Uh, I watched a lot of football, so it's hard to remember all the details. But uh, this is a team that we knew was going to have great offense. Defense stepped up in the first game. It wasn't a great opponent, so it's hard to, to really know for sure about Tennessee. And again, a lot of unknowns about all these teams. But I, I'm going to put them here at number 20 because they were very impressive. Didn't struggle really at all. West Virginia at 19, despite losing, they move into the top 25. It's the same thing with Penn State and Purdue. West Virginia took Pittsburgh. They went on the road, actually, and took Pittsburgh down to the wire. Had a chance to win this game. Probably would have won the game if the receiver hadn't dropped the ball and had the interception. Probably would have went down and won this game. Uh, JT Daniels has stepped in there, and it looks like he's going to do a really nice job for them at quarterback. Defense looked really good. Uh, their front, very strong. And we know they're going to be able to run the ball once they get into the season. That's probably still going to be their bread and butter. But this is a good West Virginia team. And they look like a team that could maybe contend in the Big 12 based off of what I saw. I know they lost, but I'm not going to penalize them for going on the road and playing a good Pittsburgh team and almost winning. Pittsburgh just ahead of them because they did win the game. At the end of the day, it is about winning the game. I think you can make an argument that West Virginia looked like a better team than Pitt, just like you could with Purdue over Penn State. But Pittsburgh did what they had to do to win the game. Um, we saw Keaton Slovis a little inconsistent, but I think he's capable of, of leading this offense, being pretty good. The defense was really strong. Uh, they had a really strong front as well. I found some some things in the run game, although they were struggling there early. Uh, but Pitt get, gets the win. They moved to 18. Texas A&M at number 17. This one's kind of tough for me. This team did did struggle early against an FCS team. I just don't know how good Sam Houston State is. I know that they have been really good at the FCS level. And so it's, again, not knowing how good they are, it's hard to tell where we should put Texas A&M. We know the roster is really talented, but they are very young. Uh, I want to see them play like Miami. That, that's when we're going to find out about Texas A&M. So, but again, I, I dropped them a little bit because of the, the struggle early on against Sam Houston State. But I don't want to drop them out just because this roster is so talented. And, again, Tex uh, Sam Houston State might actually be pretty good. Uh, they're about to be an FC FBS team. Uh, BYU at 16, they took care of business against South Florida. Uh, you know, a, an okay team out of the American, and they pretty much dominated that one. So I didn't really see a need to, to move them much. I've got them at 16. Now 11 through 15, Arkansas at number 15. Uh, we saw them... I mean, they look good in some areas. It, Arkansas is kind of a mystery for me right now. We saw in the in that second half, the, the secondary did not look very good. Cincinnati was moving the ball all over the field. Uh, even in the first half, we saw Ben Bryant miss some throws that uh, where receivers were open. So I'm a little concerned about Arkansas, and, and that's what I said in the preseason, but that back seven, and really the defense overall, uh, how good are they going to be on that side of the ball? K.J. Jefferson looked good. They need some receivers to step up, but they were able to run the football pretty well. Uh, this looks like a good team, but it's a team that, again, I think has a lot of unknowns still. Michigan State, a little bit of a, a sluggish game for them. I had them in the top 10, so I've dropped them a good bit here, number 14, just because they weren't dominant in their win. Uh, Mississippi State, all right, so here's a perfect example. You're probably not going to see this team ranked in the top 25. Why not? We saw them completely i mean dominate against memphis and you probably didn't even watch that game there was a rain delay i went back and watched it just because i, you know, I really wanted to see with a lot of these games you, you look at the score and you don't really know how the game played out but this is a game that mississippi state uh, jumped on early took care of business never any doubt against a quality american conference team so Mississippi State, to me, deserves to be ranked, and I've got them all the way up number 13 based off of what I saw in week one, not what I think this team is going to be or what I thought this team was going to be in the preseason, but based off of what I saw, Mississippi State looked like a better team than, Mich than Michigan State. Doesn't mean that I think that's how it's going to play out at the end of the year, but based off of week one, I think Mississippi State looked like the 13th best team in the country. Oklahoma and Baylor both took care of business against lesser opponents. They look, you know, that's what, if you're a top 15 team, that's what you do. Hard to really know a lot about these teams, but they took care of business, so I'm not going to really uh, move them much. All right, moving to 6 through 10, I've got USC at number 10. Kind of the same story as Oklahoma and Baylor. They took care of business against a lesser opponent. 
it was an FBS team at least. So, I mean, give them a little credit there. Uh, Miami looked really, really good. So, uh, they took care of business against an FCS team. Not really a lot to, to move them up or down for because they just did what they were supposed to do. And then I've got Utah at number eight. All right, so I've seen, I haven't seen, like I said, the AP or coaches poll, but I've just been noticing people put out their top 25s and everything. And people, why would Utah be ranked ahead of Florida? Can someone explain that to me? And I don't know how it's going to be in the AP poll, but Florida just beat this team head to head. Florida looked like the better team. I know they had home field advantage, but still, uh, it was a very, very close game. The teams looked very even, and that's why I've got Utah just dropping to eight, but Florida up to number seven. If Utah is a top 10 team, why is Florida not a top 10 team? They just beat Utah. A defense uh, was a little inconsistent for Florida, but their run game was really strong, and Anthony Richardson is the real deal. He looks like a Heisman candidate, at least based off of that first game. I know we heard a lot of hype about him when we finally saw it, and again, he looks like the real deal, and because of that, Florida is a very dangerous team. And based off of what we saw in one game, this is a top 10 team. Now they'll have a big test against Kentucky coming up, and then we'll learn a little bit more. Uh, Notre Dame at number six, they lost to a really good Ohio State team. I think I think Ohio State's really good. It's hard to say for sure. But again, coming into the year, we thought that these two teams were top 10 teams. And that's all we really have to go off of is their matchup against each other. Notre Dame played them really tough. If Ohio State is one of those top-tier teams, then yes, Notre Dame is, is a top-10 team. But if Ohio State's not as good as we thought they were going to be, then Notre Dame might not be a top-10 team. That's just one of those things we don't know. We just don't know yet. So one through five. Clemson at number five, they were in jeopardy of moving way down in these rankings because they did not look good early in the game against Georgia Tech. Uh, some of the same issues on offense. But the defense was just so good. It's hard not to rank this team pretty high just because of their defense. Even if they didn't have an offense, man, that defense is good. I think they, they're right up there with Georgia and Alabama. And because of that, and because they got some things going in the second half, I, I have to put this team at number five. Michigan at number four, they were dominant in their win. I'm more concerned about Clemson's offense than I am Michigan's defense. So that's why I do have Michigan ahead of Clemson. Uh, we need to see more from Michigan, obviously, against a better opponent. And, and even Clemson. Georgia Tech is an ACC team, but we I'd like to see Clemson play a better team before we really know about the struggles on offense that they might potentially have. And then you've got the big three, the top three, Georgia, Alabama, and Ohio State. The big question, again, is Ohio State, are they part of that top tier with Georgia and Alabama? Or is Notre Dame just not that good? And we just do not know but still, Ohio State is a great team regardless. We know this team is going to be really good. I just don't know if they're going to be on that Georgia-Alabama level. Need to see more to find that out. But yeah, defense was strong for them. That was the big question mark coming into the season. They took care of business there. Offense had some struggles, but they were able to lean on the run game in the second half. And, you know, if the pass game's not there, it's nice to have a run game. They do have both, and the Buckeyes look like they are – uh, still the favorites in the Big Ten based off of that game against Notre Dame. I've got Alabama at two, Georgia at number one. Georgia was just more impressive against a better opponent. Uh, Alabama was lights out against Utah State, a pretty good team out of the Mountain West. You know, they did what they had to do, completely dominated the game. But Georgia completely dominated against a quality team in Oregon, a team that's at least mid-tier Pac-12. I think most of us think they're going to be one of the better teams in the Pac-12. After this game, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Georgia was completely dominant in that game. There is absolutely no reason why this team should not be number one based off of what we have seen so far. I didn't do a, I usually do a graphic for the teams that I considered, but you know, I considered so many teams. And like I said in the takeaway video, and like I said all preseason, you've got the big three, you've got that top tier, and then it's just parity. Everyone else is, is very even, and that's why making these rankings is so hard. But that played out. We saw that in week one. We saw a ton of close games. So I'm just going to run through some teams that, that you might have questions about. Uh, just some things that I want to mention really quickly. Oregon, again, based off of what we saw in week one, should not be ranked. There's no reason for this team to be ranked. They got completely annihilated. Uh, it was, you know, if they had scored and made the game at least somewhat interesting, yeah, you could see them ranked. But no, there's no reason based off of one game, that one game, why Oregon should be ranked. NC State almost lost to East Carolina. 
Uh, so yeah, they're not going to be ranked for me. East Carolina, though, you have to consider them. If you're considering NC State, you have to consider East Carolina because they look really good in that game. Uh, LSU, they drop out. I talked about Kentucky earlier. Houston had to go to overtime to beat UTSA, so they're just on the outside. Oklahoma State's defense struggled. That's why they're not in here. Iowa's offense struggled. Imagine Oklahoma State's offense and Iowa's defense. You'd have a pretty good team there. Uh, Northwestern dropped out, not because of anything they did, but Nebraska didn't look great, so that win doesn't look as good now. I'm um, still considering Minnesota, Wisconsin. Need to see a little bit more. Texas, want to see some more. UCF, TCU had a nice one over Colorado, but I want to see more from them. Uh, Wake Forest, how are they going to look without Sam Hartman? They'll have a big test against Vanderbilt coming up. Oregon State was impressive with their win over Boise State. Uh, Syracuse with a huge win over Louisville. That one, it, that one is is intriguing. Maybe Syracuse is is a top twenty five team. And Louisville, maybe they're just bad. We'll see. Uh, Washington had an impressive win. SMU had an impressive win. Uh, so again, you have uh, so many teams that you have to consider here. I could keep going down the list and probably name some more teams. But those are just some teams that that I wanted to make a quick note of. So let's talk about the resume rankings. This is how I think the playoff committee would rank the teams if they had to do it now. There's a reason why they don't do it this early in the season. But just based off of resume, this is what. And uh, if you watch uh, the Voice of College Football, Mark Rogers, he does a kind of a similar top 25. As uh, you can go check his out. Uh, this is how I would do it though, based off of resume only. Georgia, they've got the best resume of win over Oregon. Then Ohio State's win over... And Ohio State's win over Notre Dame is a better win, but Georgia was so dominant. And you have to look at what played out in the actual game. That's why Georgia would still be number one. Florida, Arkansas, Florida State, Penn State, Pittsburgh, Clemson, Alabama, because they were so dominant against a pretty good Mountain West team. Northwestern, Syracuse, Rutgers, these teams have power five wins. Old Dominion has a power five win how about that? Uh, Mississippi State, nice one over Memphis. TCU, Indiana, Michigan, Oregon State, North Carolina, Arizona, Coastal Carolina, they beat Army. Uh, USC, Texas, Oklahoma, Tennessee, they were all dominant against lesser competition. And then I think the next two teams, if we had to go to a little bit further, uh, Wisconsin, uh, that's another team you can could consider. Uh, well, no, not Wisconsin played in FCS teams. That's the wrong team. Washington and SMU were the other two teams that actually did play FBS teams. I don't think a team that just has a win over an FCS team should be considered uh, in as far as resumes go. But yeah, Washington and SMU, they had blowout wins over FBS teams. And so I think you can, could consider them as well. So we'll do this each week. We'll look at the resume rankings and see how that kind of trends towards what those first college football playoff rankings will look like. Uh, but again, my top 25 and also the resume rankings here. Give me your top 25, your thoughts on mine. Anything you want to say, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more here on the SG1 Sports College Football Channel.